welcome back to Cinderella in Wonderland. Or welcome. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like this video so that other people can enjoy this moment. So, first, what, first I'm going to tell you some amazing news. We're reading two books today. The first one is called If a Dolphin or a Fish. And I think this book is really good because it's it, it looked it, it's just very amazing. It's just a very amazing. And um this book was uh by Lauren Woldarski w- and it's a Liz- Illustrated by Lori Allen Klen. <coughs> and this is the second book. And it is Here Comes Holly, the Festival of Colors. And this is um, by Minal Pandya. Um, this is like a very, very awesome story. And it's, um, I really like it. So, I'm going to do Eeny, Weeny, Miny, Mo, and I'll see which book I'm reading first. Mo, catch your tiger by the toe. If you hollers, let it go. Eeny, Weeny, Miny, Mo. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, guys, it's Here Comes Holy. Okay, so let's get started in this book. Let me get in my comfy spot. And let's start. Here comes Holi, the Festival of Colors. Minal Panya. Whoa, guys, look at how colorful this page is. I think my favorite color is going to be with the greenish blue here. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys like this page too. Here comes Holy, the Festival of Colors. Today is Holy, Mom said. What's Holy, I asked. It's a day to play with colors. Look outside and you will see, Mom said. Outside, I saw a crowd of people having fun, throwing colors at each other. Maya was filling her Pichkari from a giant brass pot. Raju, Goind, and Abba were throwing colored powder at each other. Look, guys, this is very cute. I love the illustration and I love the explanation of what the children were doing. Okay, next page. Why do people throw colors on holy? Ma- uh, I asked. Let me tell you a story, Mom said. Raju, Goin, and Abba also joined us on the porch. We all sat on the swing. Once upon a time, thousands of years ago, there was a young prince named Hadald. Tadald was a very kind and happy prince. His smile made everyone happy. Everyone in the kingdom loved him and fulfilled his every wish. Kalad was as happy as anyone could be. But there was one problem. Hmm, what could that problem be, guys? His father, King Hiryanas Pukku, was a asuna, a demon, who was cruel and, and who was a cruel and unkind king. He thought of himself as the most powerful man on earth. That is because many years ago he had done a very long penance for God Brahma to get special plow- powers for him himself. He prayed to God Brahma for days without eating or sleeping. When God Brahma appeared, Pleased by his penance, he asked God Brahma to grant him a wish that could he could live forever. After thinking for a, lo- for a while, Brahma's, God Brahma said, I cannot grant you that wish, but I can grant you a wish that you can never be killed by any man or 
animal, and you can never be killed by any weapon. You can never be killed, in, killed during daytime or nighttime, and you can never be killed outside or inside any house or buildings. Pleased with God Brahma's boon, the king came back to his kingdom and a very happy, proud man, for he was sure that now no one could ever kill him. From then on, <coughs> the strong and arrogant king <coughs> demanded that everyone respect him more than anyone else, even more than any god, including God Vishnu, the god who looked after the entire universe. Everyone in his kingdom was afraid of him, so he so, and so they did as they were told. So basically, what this is saying is that <clears throat> God uh, Brahma granted him a wish, saying that he cannot be killed anywhere or he cannot not be killed anyhow, and um, he took that advantage. Um, a little misused, like he made his people, um, like treat him more better and like was very cruel and unkind to people. But his own son, Prahalad, was different. Prahalad had learned to respect God Vishnu from his mother and his teachers, and he was not afraid of his father. Even though he was only eight years old, one day as he was playing on his father's lap, his father asked me, Tell me, dear son, what have you learned in school? Who is the strongest in our kingdom? The young prince replied, Father, I think it is you. You are the strongest in our kingdom. The king, quite pleased with his son's answer, smiled and asked, "Who? Tell me, son. Tell me, my dear son, who is the strongest in the whole world? Rahalad thought for a moment, then replied, Father, it is God Vishnu. He is the strongest in the whole world. This answer made king very angry. He sent Pradalad away to school and told his te teachers to teach him properly. But then again, after a few months, when he, the king asked the same questions again, Prahlad gave the same answers. And uh, what is telling is like his son was very kind and was a very different. He learned to respect to God Vishnu when his father is not a fan of God Vishnu. The answer made. The answer that Prahlad gave made the king furious. He ordered his army to bring a troop of wild and angry elephant. He asked the soldiers to tie the young prince and leave him on the ground. Then he sent these angry elephants to trample him. To the king's surprise, when the elephants came near Prahlad, a miracle happened. Instead of running over the little prince and killing him, the elephants bowed to him and turned around. On lookers cheered in delight. This made the king even more angry. Then the king thought of a new plan. What do you think the new plan is going to be? Oh, oops, I forgot to show you guys the photo. So basically, when his father tied his son in the grounds and like made some elephants trample over him, instead of trampling over him, um, what happened was the elephants bowed to Prince Prahalad. The king had a sister named Holika, who loved her brother very much and would do anything for him. Holika was very, had a very special sari. This sari, although it looks like any other sari, was made of a special fabric that could never be burned by fire. Knowing about this sari, the king asked Holika to help him. Holika agreed to do whatever her brother wanted. He announced in his kingdom that the next day, when the sun went down, a special bonfire would be lit in the center of town. In this fire, Holika would sit with the prince in her lap, knowing everyone, everyone knew about Holika's special sari and the king's instructions of killing 
in the king's intentions of killing young Prahlad. With sad faces and heavy hearts, they all gathered in the center of the town to bid farewell to their beloved prince. No one could eat anything that day, dreading what was to come. At last, evening came. In the center of the town, a huge fire was lit. Holika was ready with her special sari wrapped around her and took Prahlad in her lap. Not knowing his aunt's evil intentions, he felt very safe in her lap, but every else, everyone else was worried. As the orange flames touched the sky, people's hearts sank in their deep sorrow. They all expected that Holika would come out the fire unharmed and their beloved prince would be burned to ashes. And here he and his aunt are in the fire. And remember, whenever you want to see the picture more, you could just pause the video. But when they saw, but what they saw was different. It was pra Prahla, their beloved prince, walking out the fire unharmed and smiling instead of, and smiling instead of Holika. Prahla said that the strongest, the strong gust of wind came, and the sari came undone on Holika and covered him, protecting him from the fire. Prahla told everyone that he had promised his aunt Holika when he, she asked for forgiveness that in her memory this day would be called holy and everyone else would celebrate holy with col colors to remember her. That is why even after thousands of years on the day of holy people throw colors at each other and rejoice, said mom as she finished her story. We played with the colored water, Abil and Gulial all day with our friends, uncles, aunts, and grandparents. In the evening, I took a bath and loved the new clothes mom had for me. After taking a bath, we all went to the center of town where a huge fire had been lit. We sat around the fire praying and thinking about brave Prahlad and his aunt Holika. When we came home, mom had prepared my favorite dinner. Sorry guys, just a little stuck up. Mom was right, holy was fun. And at bedtime, I remembered how much it was and I remembered all how the day was. Mom, what happened to Prahlad and the king after Prahlad came out of the fire? I asked. Mom smiled and continued her story. When King saw that Prahlad came out of the fire alive, chanting God Vishnu's name, and that his beloved sister had burned to into the fires, he being very angry, he asked, Where is your God Vishnu? Prahlad replied, He is everywhere. So the king asked, Is he in this palace? Is he in this room? Is he in this iron pillar? Prahlad said, Yes, of course. The king ordered his servants to heat up a big iron pillar. He asked them to make it so hot that it would glow all red. Then he told the Prahlad, If you think God Vishnu is in this pillar, then go and hug the pillar, or agree that I'm stronger than your God Vishnu. Prahlad thought for a moment. Looking in the red hot iron pillar, he was frightened. But as he squinted his eyes at the pillar, he saw a long line of black ants crawling upward. If those ants can climb the pillar, it cannot be that hot. So why should I be afraid, he thought. So to everyone's amazement, amazement, he ran and hugged the big fat red hot pillar with his two tiny hands while chanting the name God Vishnu. Everyone in the court, in the king's court gasped. But wait, why was the pillar cracking? With a thunderous sound, the pillow cracked open and out came a strange looking creature that was half man and half lion. I'm Narsima, said the creature, and I'm here to protect you all from the evil king. For the first time in his life, the king felt a strange sense of fear at the sight of Narsima. He ran for the door, but Narsima grabbed him and dragged him on the doorstep of the castle. The frightened king remembered God Brahma's boon and told Narasimha, You cannot kill me inside or outside of any house or castle. You are right, said Narasimha. 
but we are on the doorstep, neither outside nor outside nor inside. The king said, God, Brahma gave me the spoon that no man or animal can me can kill me. Yes, but I'm neither man nor animal. I'm Narasimha, half lion and half man, came the reply. Then Narasimha reminded that it was evening time, neither daytime nor nighttime. Now the king was really frightened. But, but, he stuttered, I cannot be killed by any weapon. True, said Narasimha. I do not need any weapon. My claws are strong enough. Saying that, Narasimha king killed the evil king and everyone in the entire kingdom and rejoiced. They declared Parahalad to be their new king and lived happily ever after. Mom smiled as she finished the story and tucked me in. The end. What a wonderful story, guys, this was. It was very awesome, and I really loved it. Um, if you do, don't forget to like this video and share this video to everyone. Your family, your brother, your sister, everyone. And now time to do the second story. If a dolphin were a fish. Delphinia is a bottlenose dolphin. She lives in the ocean with many of her friends. Delphinia often wonder what it would be like to be other animals. If a dolphin were a fish, dolphin, Delphinia could spend all her time underwater. But dolphins are not fish. They, the fish use gills to breathe on the water. Delphinia comes to the water surface to breathe air through the blowhole on top of her head instead of gills. A dolphin breathes air with a pair of lungs, like humans. Believe it or not, dolphins are sea creatures, but they're very alike to human beings, like me and you. If a dolphin were a sea turtle, dolphinia would lay eggs on the beach. Look, guys, it looks like a fish... A dolphin as a turtle. Isn't that funny? But dolphins do not lay eggs. Do, is not a sea turtle. A dolphin does not lay eggs. Instead, a dolphin gives birth to her calf underwater. A dolphin mother usually has one calf at a time. A sea turtle's mother can lay more than a hundred eggs each time she nests. Isn't that cool, guys? Look at the tiny little turtles. And look at the calf and the dolphin. If a dolphin were a shark, Delphinia could smell her food from far away. But dolphins is not a shark. In fact, Delphinia cannot smell a thing. Instead, she finds her food with her excellent eyesight and a special kind of hearing called echolocation. If a dolphin were a manatee, manatee, Delphinia would only eat plants. But dolphin, dolphin is not. But a dolphin is not a manatee. A manatee eats plants, and dolphins eat other animals like fish and squid. If a dolphin were a bird, Delphinia would have feathers on her body to keep her warm. Hey guys, look, this is like a dolphin-shaped tail for the bird. But a dolphin is not a word. bird. Delphinia has a thick layer of fat called blubber under her skin to keep her warm in the cold water. If a dolphin were an octopus, Delphinia would not have any bones in her body. But, dolphin is, but a dolphin is not an octopus. A dolphin has a skeleton in its body made of hard bones. Dolphinia has a backbone, skull, rib bones, just like me and you. A dolphin has even five fingers or digits on its front flipper that are similar to bones in our hand. See guys, look, this is how our hand is, and this is how a dolphin's fin looks like.
Isn't that cool? No, Delphine is not a fish, a sea turtle, nor a shark, mantis, bird, or octopus. She is a bottlenose dolphin, and we love her just the way she is. Look at how beautiful this dolphin is. Wow, guys, I really love this book. Oh, look, guys, it shows us the little diagram at the end of the book. And it says, like, it's it's really, it, like, shows us, like, the parts of a dolphin and, um, yeah. This text is a fun read, and it's really engaging, and it's very well structured. Um, I really enjoyed this book very much because it's uh, telling us that we are just the way we are, and no one else can, like, be us. Because a dolphin can't be a sea turtle. And a sea turtle can't be a dolphin. Even though we wish to be someone, we can't be them because we are a unique way and we are who we are. And this book, um, hope this book showed you you are beautiful just the way you are. And um, thank you, um, Lauren Waldarkey and uh, and uh, Lori Allen Kellyan for um, illustrating and re uh, writing this book. I really enjoyed this book. Um, and all my viewers, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful uh, um, day. And uh, guess what guys, June 20th is summer and I hope you guys have a wonderful summer and an enjoyable um, summer. So thank you for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day and life.